Okay, so uh, you've treated your patient with toxin and we're now two weeks post-treatment, they're, they're, they've attended for their review appointment um, and they tell you that their toxin treatment hasn't worked or hasn't worked how they expected um, and you assess them um, and when you think about their levels of activity pre-treatment, how their imagery looked pre-treatment, you feel like the effect hasn't been what they expected uh, and, and even what you expected. So why might this happen? What are the things that we can do uh, to prevent this happening um, and think about how we might moderate, modulate treatment going forward? Okay, so in terms of categorizing and trying to work out why hasn't this treatment uh, matched expectations either for yourself as the injector or the patient. I think we can split it into three, three categories. Um, so we've got, uh, from my perspective, product, uh, patient, and injector factors. So when we think about, let's start with product. So we know that you know all brands of toxin um, must be stored uh, and transported in a certain way. Uh, we know that uh, Botox from Allergan, uh, Azalur from Galderma must be transported cold chain, so always between two and eight degrees and stored at those temperatures. Uh, when we think about Bocatur from Mertz, it can be transported pre-reconstitution at room temperature. Um, and then once reconstituted, must be stored between two and eight degrees. So any issues from that regard are potentially raising issues in terms of efficacy if the if those storage requirements are not met. Okay, so then in terms of product reconstitutions, how we actually make the product up, remember that for certain products, it's important that they're reconstituted in a specific way. Um, thinking particularly about Bocatur, remember it's important that the vial is prepared in a certain way after the introduction of the reconstitution agent, so typically bacteriostatic saline. It's important that the vial is swirled in a figure of eight pattern and for a couple of seconds and then inverted twice. So that, that's particularly important that we make sure that all of the powder is, is reconstituted and mixed with the reconstitution agent correctly. Then other potential issues which I think are way down the list um, when we think about reasons for this, but you know potential issues with manufacturing um, in terms of how the product is made. Again, I think this is very low down on the risk in terms of why uh, the treatment may not have worked, but worth bearing in mind in terms of lot numbers, batch numbers. You know, if you're right down the bottom of this list um, in terms of likelihoods, then, you know, worth bearing that in mind. Okay, so then we move on to the second category, which for me is the patient category. So, and I think that this is probably most commonly um, where perhaps, um, expectation and reality perhaps um, isn't lining up um, and also perhaps a little bit to do with um, a practitioner experience and particular experience in terms of the use of toxin generally. So I mean I think that patient expectation management is important. So if we have a patient uh, who has particularly deep etched static lines visible at rest, not upon activation of the muscle, i.e. dynamic lines, then you know it's important to remember that regardless of the approach in terms of technique or dose, that it's very unlikely that those lines are going to completely disappear. So that's one patient factor. Okay, then um, another patient uh, factor to bear in mind is concordance with aftercare. So we know that um, what is most likely that using the muscles injected immediately post-treatment for somewhere between 15 and 60 minutes uh, will likely increase the speed of the uptake of the product um, in terms of getting to the motor end plates and, and the product working more quickly. So very unlikely to actually affect long-term um, outcome in terms of what's actually happening once the product is completely kicked in as it were at two weeks. But if speed of onset is an, is, is an issue for patients, bear that one in mind using the muscles post-treatment. Uh, so, you know, making a frown, raising the eyebrows, giving us a big smile to activate those muscles is worth doing in terms of speed of onset, uh, but not really that important in terms of final picture after onset at two weeks. 
Okay, so then finally in terms of you know potential patient issues, and we're getting into rare hen's teeth stuff, you know, is it possible uh, that this patient is either a primary non-responder, meaning that you know, in spite of never, never having had toxin before, it simply just will not work for them. Uh, this is exceedingly unlikely and right down the list, getting into hen's teeth stuff. Very rare also, but more common, secondary non-response. So someone who's been having treatment um, for a long time, um, you know, particularly if they've been having, uh, you know, treatment for a long time, uh, within a dose range that's, that's a little on the higher end of the spectrum, it is theoretically possible to develop neutralizing antibodies. Uh, so, uh, you know, keep that uh, up your sleeve as a possibility. You know, think that it's that kind of picture. So someone's been getting treatment for a long time, worked absolutely perfectly up until that point, and then just suddenly stops working. Secondary non-response, possible, but very low in terms of of um, likelihood. Then the final category uh, of you know, potential uh, reasons why a treatment hasn't worked is getting into injector, uh, the injector category. So something that the injector has done and all the things we've talked about um, in terms of product reconstitution, we can kind of play in with this. But in terms of in, in injector um, issues that might have led to a treatment that uh, basically either you as the injector or the patient is not completely happy with. Um, I think that the aligning of expectation and, and, and reality is important um, in terms of where the patient started as a baseline, particularly thinking about static lines. And then within that, you know, potential injector issues and, you know, aligning um, intensity of outcome really uh, is about dose. And that's really the biggest thing. You know, one of the things that we know about dose, regardless of brand, is that the more that we use in terms of dose to treat a certain area, that the intensity of initial effect, so let's say at two weeks post initial treatment, is going to be more uh, the more that you use in terms of dose, regardless of brand. Um, so that is one thing you've got to bear in mind. Has this patient not responded the way they expected because I, the dose that was used was never going to produce the kind of outcome that they wanted? So in terms of managing dose, patient expectations and outcomes, sometimes it can be tricky clinically um, where you're trying to strike a balance between you know, making your patients happy, giving them the kind of intensity of outcome that they, that they desire, be that you know, mild, moderate, uh, or significantly more um, intense in terms of treatment outcome. You've got to balance that up with where are they at anatomically um, in terms of managing risk, and uh, particularly in terms of complications of all the things that we know about uh, in terms of treating the upper face with toxin. Okay, so in summary, uh, for me, in terms of Outcomes with toxin, uh, thinking particularly about intensity of outcome, I think we've got kind of three things at play. We've got product factors, we've got uh, patient factors, and we've got injector factors. I think for me, probably the two most likely uh, causes of discontent, unhappiness with patients and or injector are related to patient, first of all, in terms of what their expectations were versus where they're at baseline and then injector issues. And this is really about dose and trying to match that up with uh, what the patient wants, where you're at in terms of being comfortable with what you're doing dose wise while managing expectations. And it's something that comes with time, it comes with experience um, and we do all occasionally bump into minor issues like this. So if you come across this situation, work through systematically all those little things that I've talked about within each category and I expect that you'll find um, the answer in there somewhere. I hope you enjoyed this content. If you did, hit like, subscribe and share to see a bit more.